I'm Brian Fisher with Collegiate Sports Connect and D1 Ticker. Pleased to be joined by Mountain West Commissioner Craig Thompson. And Craig, you just handed out the trophy to the Mountain West title game. I, I'm sure this season has been a lot less stressful for you compared to what was tw you know 2020 and being in the middle of pan pandemic. Oh, absolutely. You know, we're still having uh, issues. I, I'm puzzled like the rest of the world, the whys, how, how we can't figure out to uh, battle this virus a little bit better. But, you know, San Diego State came into the game with some issues and they were down uh, more than a dozen players. That's not an excuse. And they won't tell you that was an excuse, a great performance uh, by Utah State. But nonetheless, we're still dealing with it, Brian. But it is uh, it is a lot better in 2021. You know, we would literally wait right up to within a couple hours of a tip-off or kickoff of a particular match and, and wait for that phone call that uh, we can't go, we're not going. And, and that included, on occasion rarely, officials as well as the players. Has there been any talk between your presence, your athletic directors, about maybe making that more of a permanent thing to whether it's in Los Angeles, like yet at Dignity Health, or here in Las Vegas? Yeah, you know, that's something we talk about a lot, our athletic director group. And, you know, we've had nine championships all on a campus. And it is something because it's a little easier to develop and promote. You literally don't know that you're hosting the game until uh, six days out. And so that's a challenge for both the host and the visiting team to a degree. And, and certainly our staff. So uh, I, I know it's a continual conversation that we'll have. And the game was on Fox at uh, you know midday on, on Championship Saturday. I, I'm curious, what's that relationship like now that you're a couple of years into your new media deal and, and how, how have things gone with, with Fox and your other TV partners? We love them. You know, our two partners, CBS and Fox are fantastic. And, and uh, this was the first full season with Fox and uh, great partnership and really appreciate all that they do and the promotion they provide us. and. You know, it's going to be uh, something that we'll be able to build and grow on. But it was a great championship setting, unique. Uh, I, San Diego State hasn't played a home game in over two years. Right. And so it's phenomenal what they were able to pull off. And, and now the reward will come uh, next, uh, next fall when they open that beautiful state-of-the-art stadium with uh, Arizona. It's going to be well worth it. But back to your question, a, a neutral site is something that we have discussed a lot as the league, and I'm sure we'll continue. San Diego State did the week prior play a 9 a.m. game on, on CBS. Have, have you had any more conversations about making that more of a regular occurrence? And, and what are the conversations like with CBS about maybe potentially taking over that uh, 330 slot that the SEC is vacating? That's definitely on the, uh, the radar screen, and we hope to continue that dialogue. The, uh, the, the Fox uh, kickoff was fantastic in the afternoon, but that early morning CBS game works for us as well. There were uh, just under 2 million viewers for that game. Uh, 1.95 and it was a fantastic setting and you know we're kind of used to the early mornings in the west to a degree and, and that's something in conversation with CBS that that we continually look at those those Black Friday games after Thanksgiving and opening weekend and week zero games etc uh, also able to put the Air Force Army game in Dallas on CBS a couple weeks prior to uh, that was an, a morning kickoff. But with that sliding window, that's hopefully an opportunity for the Mountain West in the future. Now, obviously, in some years, that could have been for a playoff spot between one of your teams. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's no white smoke coming out of Dallas in the meeting. What, what is the current state of college football playoff expansion? And, and do you anticipate a deal being done in, in January when you meet again? Well, that's a great question. I do anticipate the playoff will expand, uh, whether it happens in the last couple of years of this current contract, whether it's uh, uh, in the 13th year, there's 12 years contractually with the SPN, and there is no contract. There is nothing for year 13, so something's going to have to give. But I truly believe, you know, the, the conversation in the room, there are 10 commissioners in, in Notre Dame that are interested in expanding, committed to expansion. It's just the particulars now when we're talking about automatic qualification, uh, we're talking about uh, you know a couple other issues that, that have to be resolved. And presumably compromises will need to be made. So I don't know if it will get done in January the next time the board meets at the national championship game or not. But uh, I, I, I do feel absolutely positively that the uh, playoff will expand. I mean, what are the dynamics like in that room? You were part of the subcommittee that came up with the 12-team proposal. You presented it to the other commissioners. How have the dynamics inside the room kind of changed over the last couple of months? Well, a little biased. I think it's a really good plan. And, you know, <laughs> the, the 11 of us now have spent more time discussing uh, the, the 
proposal than the four of us did in the two years prior to, to deliver it. But to, uh, to expand to 12 teams, we didn't start at 12 teams. It just made sense as we started breaking down four and six and 18 models, et cetera. It made a lot of sense. And, and the, the qualification, you know, the, the rewards of being a top four seed, you get a buy. Uh, five through eight, they get to play a, uh, you know, a proverbial home game, it, you know. And so, you know, we're looking at there's a lot of positives in this model. And it's just going to be a matter of, of people willing to give and take. You know, we've seen how it's shaken out with four teams and which leagues have been consistent participants and which haven't. And uh, I think it's the best for college football because if you go back over the last uh, uh, CFP era, the last seven years, uh, I think the numbers, you know, 30, 35 uh, different teams would have been added to the mix. Uh, some repeat teams, no question about that. Uh, you know, we could probably presume that Alabama's going to be pretty good in 2040. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you look at it and it makes a lot of sense. And I think it adds up that it, it probably behooves the sport to expand at this point. I mean, you do need all 11 in unison saying yes to expansion at this point, but that has indicated by the other commissioner statements, that's not the case mm -hmm. after the contract expires. Do you feel like you almost, as a group of five, maybe you, you lose a little leverage uh, going into that if there's no expansion in January? Yeah, you know, to a degree. Again, uh, emphasizing there is no playoff uh, in year 13. There's a, there's a format with four teams, and uh, as we know it today, through a 12-year period and so something's got to happen and whether that happens before the, the termination of the 12 years or in year 13. So you know I, I think when you look at it you know I've represented when TCU and Utah were in the Mountain West Conference previously we've won Sugar Bowls, we've won Rose Bowls, uh, Fiesta Bowls and we're in the top four, five, and six in, in the final uh, than BCS rankings. And so, you know, it's not as though these teams aren't at that level or can't play consistently because that's not true. And, and other leagues in that grouping of five, as you mentioned, have also, and obviously the penultimate, uh, uh, you know, Cincinnati playing in the 14 playoff this year. And so there, there, is, there are capable teams in those five conferences. And so it's just going to be a matter of, uh, you know, the consistency and the argument of, well, if they played these types of schedules, they wouldn't be 12-0. Well, I would argue back that if they played our schedules, they might not be 12-0 either. Uh, you know, San Diego State, our champion, beat the Pac-12 champion this year. Uh, we've had a couple of people, I think we were 500 against the Pac-12 this year. So we have proven, you know, for 23 years now that, that we can play at a very high level. Anytime the playoff expansion or media rights kind of comes up, there's the topic of potential gambling sponsorships. You've been in Las Vegas for coming on two decades now. I'm curious, do you, do you sense that the time is right for college sports to be a little bit more involved with the gambling industry? And, and do you potentially see any Mountain West tie-ups, uh, whether it's sponsorship or, or the like, between your schools or the conference? Yeah, and, and we talk about that as a league all the time, and each institution is a little different. Obviously, UNLV and Nevada perhaps are different than mm -hmm. other institutions because of uh, the curriculum they offer on their campuses, as an example. But, you know, there's going to be a, a movement towards, and we've seen a number of institutions getting into that space now. It's not, uh, uh, I don't know if taboo is the right word, the way it was perceived in years past. You know, we're looking now, the NCAA is going to come and hold championships in Nevada. And, and it's pretty prevalent when you look at, uh, you know, all the various aspects and, and the funding they provide for those particular states, you know, through whether it's, uh, you know, lotteries or, or other forms. But, uh, you know, you're probably speaking specifically to, you know, sports book. And I, I think it'll still take some time to get into particular aspects of, of gaming. But uh, in general, it's, uh, it's a changing environment. You've been been the commissioner for now 23 years. I'm curious, has the rate of change in, in college athletics the last really 18 months, even going back two years, even outside of the pandemic, has it surprised you at how quickly everything has been moving? And do you anticipate it maybe slowing down a little bit uh, once we get a new constitutional convention and, and, and beyond? I don't really. And I, it's unfortunate, but I think people are, are, what have you done for me this year or today or this season? 
and and we don't give the chance that we used to to develop in three or four years or, or over a certain space of time, you know, we're looking at a situation of uh, we need immediate success, that immediate gratification, and the fan bases are are uh, you know very intolerant of of giving time and spaces. We want to win now. We want to perform at a particular level now. And so I think those things are probably going to even be magnified, unfortunately. And, you know, there's just not, um, it's not unheard of to have people, you know, in positions for less than two years. And, you know, it's very hard to turn a program around in two years. The reason you made a change is because there were some issues in the program, right? And so to, to give such a short leash, I think, is, is problematic, but it's probably here to stay. Does a expanded playoff and, and the added pressures that it might bring to your schools, just in terms of trying to make that uh, big tournament at the end of the year, does, does that kind of increase things even further, you think, uh, when it happens? Yes, and, and you know, you look at what's happening in terms of Division Two moving into Division One of FCS moving up to FBS, uh, even conference realignment, you know, what we've just seen with the, the WAC and what they're trying to achieve potentially. Uh, with the sport of football and so again the, the tolerance level is very low and and it's uh, it's the immediate uh, you know opportunity to win and to uh, uh, turn turn something that wasn't into something that is a lot on the plate of the commissioner of the mountain west craig thompson thanks for joining us appreciate it